Yeah, baby. Yeah. The Mac is back. Back with another video. Hello, the initiated. My name is Marcus Yunikala, and today we're checking out Oblivion by Heaviosity. Super excited for this one. Obviously, a very epic name, so there's a lot to live up to. Um, as you know, I'm a big, big Heaviosity fan, so every time they release anything, I'm at the very least interested. But this seems to be, you know, going down the, the corridor of the cinematic, you know, epic, hybrid kind of stuff. Uh, and in, you know, those kind of cases, I'm especially uh, interested. Um, let's go right into what this is. I have the press release here opened, which is just a PDF with text. So we're not gonna, we can't open a website now because it's not released yet, but um, let's read this through. So this is kind of subtitled aggression designer, which is quite interesting. Hard hitting hybrid virtual instrument designed to channel your aggression. Unleashes raw, unhinged power and visceral emotion. Ready to transform your next cue. Uh, dive into an arsenal of intriguing rhythmic pedals. Good. Beastly basses. Yes. Scorching leads. Yes. And modular ambiences. So, yeah, I'm, I'm especially <laughs> excited for this because this might really like perfectly patched in, patch into this soundtrack that I'm working on. It's kind of actually been interesting because <laughs> Heavy OC has released quite a lot of uh, <clears throat> products throughout the duration of this soundtrack project and I've been kind of plonking them in there uh, one after the other to kind of, you know, you know, plug some holes, so to speak, or serve a purpose. Uh, that happened big time with Gravity 2. Gravity 2 is all over this soundtrack and I, I think I'm still missing some bits and bobs or things that could be better and this sounds very much like something that has the potential to help me out with that one. Uh, Oblivion was born from a collection of unique and stylized analog sources refined by advanced audio editing and processing techniques resulting in unmatched intensity and untamed savagery. Savagery. Sap, can I pronounce that? Savagery. Sure. This process has created the most obscene, gritty, and powerful sounds. That sounds like me. Perfect for wreaking havoc and driving high-octane action. So this one is also interesting because they've partnered with Composer David Levi, known for his work on Doom Eternal, Gen Lock, and Justice League. Uh, Levi's signature dark and ominous sound blends synthetic and organic instruments with modern sound design. So that sounds very much like Heavy OST anyway, so probably a good partnership, at least on paper. Uh, combined with Heavy OST's own expertise in meticulous curation, resulted in a uniquely impactful and evocative instrument. Comprises over 330 distinct sound sources, amounting to more than 1,980 samples meticulously crafted by the Heavy OST team. Ranging from thunderous basses and piercing leads to intricate loops, unsettling stings, haunting drones and explosive risers, Oblivion unleashes innate emotion and intensity at every turn. Sounds like a like a pretty wide scope of things. I've, I'm getting like gravity vibes here in that way because gravity two uh, should be more precise. Gravity two, I feel like really expanded the um, the scope and the depth and the versatility of gravity one. Uh, they're they're really like. <laughs> I can't really come up with words that do justice for Gravity 2 because it has so much in there and so much scope. Like you could take that alone and build uh, like an epic hybrid track with that. Well, maybe not so heavy on the orchestral end, but like the synthetic process, sy synthetic things. Uh, maybe add a touch of percussion from somewhere, but it's such a versatile, great sounding thing. And you can do so many things with playing with uh, the rhythmic pedals like timing and and the loops of them it's it's just so much fun to use that so i'm actually quite 
interested in in how this is going to play out uh because it, it can be very d difficult to obviously they've done a good job at branding gravity 2 as this sort of like cinematic toolkit box box toolkit sure let's go with that one um but it just does so so much more uh so if this is along those same lines i'm i'm super excited um Housed in Heavy Ossity's most powerful engine to date, Oblivion brings over 8 gigs of explosive aggression right to your fingertips. So, not a huge footprint. Uh, quite small, but again, in like, I don't remember how, how big is, um, how big is, uh, where's my sample drive? How big is Gravity 2? I don't think it, it's a, it's a very big, uh, sample library either. 9.54 gigs so pretty much in the same ballpark so that gives me good vibes uh, where's the press kit again there we go so quite a lot of stuff can fit in there and they use like tiny sample snippets and then it, you can do so much with it so one i mean that gives me good vibes because it's in the same ballpark as gravity 2. all right with Oblivion, our goal was to push the limits of impactful sound design, creating an instrument that channels raw power and intensity like never before. Well, you've done it before in an ins at an insane level, so <laughs> if this is like never before, I'm probably gonna just faint. Isn't just another virtual instrument, it's a visceral, visceral ex experience that delivers unmatched sonic force infusing every composition with unhinged power so a lot of very powerful words uh so yeah for a limited time heavy OST is offering oblivion aggression designer for 119 dollars so that's the intro pricing regular pricing is going to be 149 dollars so i expected this to be more simply based on like the initial impressions. How much is Gravity 2? Let's, uh, I actually, I actually have no memory of that. So yeah, Gravity 2 is $449, which is, you know, not a, uh, no, not a cheap library. So this is really surprising to me because this gives me very similar vibes to the, kind of the approach or the um, kind of the general package idea. So I expected this to be more for sure. So in relation to my expectations, this is a pretty low price, but so it's probably going to be something different. And to be clear, I'm making the comparisons here to Gravity 2, but these are clearly not the same thing you know the pricing the way they describe it um but yeah some of the things they do list to be in there gives me similar vibes but uh don't get me wrong this is not intended to be gravity 2.1 or gravity 3 or anything like that i'm sure if you own gravity 2 you'll get an additional 20 bucks off with a registered serial and that's going to end on august 20 three 2024 okay so that's gonna put this under just a under a hundred dollars if you do intro pricing and you have gravity 2. this is a powered by contact instrument um so uh yeah both full version of contact and free contact 7 player work um yep this doesn't actually say which version you need but in the email i had that information which is actually i had to update my contact to be able to run this i believe <clears throat> so in the email i got you need contact 7.10.5 so you need a pretty fresh version mine was i think 7.8 and now i'm whatever the newest one is so make sure you are good with that good to go um because otherwise you're 
going to be a sad person. Okay, I think that's enough background here. Um, let's go through the basics. In terms of what we'll, we'll be doing here today, I'm just going to try and play as much of this right out of the box as possible. So we're going to go through as many sounds as I possibly can. Uh, looking at how this is structured, doesn't seem like an impossible amount of content. So yeah, you, I do from looking at these folders, uh, I can see that the size is definitely not like Gravity 2 size. So that makes sense. Uh, plenty of stuff still in here. And also many of the rhythmics, rhythmic things here are surely going to be in the queue creators. But I think we should be able to go through all of this. I certainly want to. So that's what we'll be doing. Uh, everything you'll hear today is only Oblivion in action. I don't add any effects, no EQ, no reverb, nothing, no compression, just as Oblivion sounds right out of the box. I have a limiter on my master bus to bring the level up, make it decent for this video, but it's set to be as transparent as I possibly can set it. If you hear any occasional clipping, it's the limiter going crazy and I'll let you know probably in either case if it's certainly if it's not I'll let you know but bear with me as I adjust it as we move along because a lot of these sounds are not going to be at the same level heavy Osti did send me this copy so thank you to them for doing that that being said as always all opinions are my own both in good and bad I haven't been asked to say anything one way or the other, nor would I ever do that. Anything else we need to touch on here? I don't think so. When you open your side panel, look at that. It looks so good. <laughs> I love this green color, green orange color uh, scheme. Uh, scheme, 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 yes. Yeah, I think so. Uh, not that it matters from a sound perspective, but makes makes me feel good about working with this. So you got uh, two main NKIs here. You got designer and then menu. So yeah, I was just looking at the designer folder. So maybe this is a bigger task than I realized. But we're going to start with the designer there, which we have opened here. I think we are going to just go more or less in order unless something comes up but go into the queue creators folder and choose attacking steel which happened to be the first preset here at least for me so let's uh start playing go straight to a electronic music festival with that one bass is loaded creator Q, Q creator uh, uh, patches or whatever you call them presets uh, we do have different zones here um, so in the yellow we have this kind of a bass thing going here in the orange kind of dealing with like a pad ish 
thingy and then we have some effects or transitions up here and then usually the red zone changes the, the what does it change actually have no idea in this case wait a minute because with rhythmic pedals it changes the pitch but obviously here we can control it I'll try and figure figure that out as we move along but yeah I mean if you lo find something you like you can move these things around no issue so this controls for some reason the green color is controlling yellow here and then we have this red that's interesting red here which controls the kind of the orange color there which is again strange but easy enough to follow let's go to the next preset Really like this sound. It's uh, going for that kind of broken uh, sound, but it's still very easily. It doesn't get you know muddy or you know mushed up. That's a that's a bit too loud for the limiter. Again, nice. It, it, it remains very precise and it hits you hard, but they're also very gritty and kind of smudgy in a way, but it, it remains remarkably clear for being, you know, that type of sound. effects sound really really good or whatever you would call these okay so here we definitely control pitch with the red keys sounds like a dark uh, drunken reaper from mass effect yeah i mean these are these are really like sticking out to me sound really good these kind of special effect things and what I love about these is that you can play them in pitch. I said I would need to move that that zone somewhere more usable from a keyboard standpoint, but
that's a good sound. I want that playable. Okay, so someone before told me how to do that. <laughs> and I'm sorry I have failed you. Uh... So there was a way to open up the sound and then you could sp spread it. I can't find the There was a way to just make it kind of instantly playable. Uh, why do I not remember this? Um, I think it was at least in gravity from here. And then you could just kind of choose it to be mapped to all the keys but I can't find it now I'm not gonna waste more of your time we'll go to the um, should be going to the other menus as well to see those things so this seems to be different in the sense that it's kind of like a collection of different uh, sounds there instead of being you know mapped as, as playable that's the limiter space pad so this is kind of like I'm still trying to wrap my head around everything that's in here obviously we're not in the best folder for that or in a way we are kind of getting an overall idea of what's in here but uh, yeah big big kind of broad uh, breadth breadth I can't speak for crap today but you get the idea Okay, that's really good. I, I like these these kind of broken, abrupt, shorter things that have the smudgy part, but also the distinct uh, no actually hitting. These are quite clear and precise. That's not that's not easy to do. I, I want a bit more range on there. So can I pull this? Okay, so I'm I'm noticing 
one issue here. <laughs> okay, so I, I can drag the red and you can also drag the blue. I don't know what it is, but in gravity as well, I have this issue that sometimes I just cannot... There we go. Like I tried that like 10 times and I can't quite find the pixel <laughs> that's needed to grab the, the the node, the end of the line, to move it about. That was in Gravity 2 as well, that issue for me. And it seems to be here, although that was more difficult than before, but something definitely to look into. I also really encourage you to push these boundaries. Don't, you know, believe what it offers you out of the gate. These are only like one person's or a few people's sound design. Uh, vision for this sound that I that they wanted to create. So don't be afraid to stretch these around. Obviously, they've kind of uh, I, in Gravity Two. I clearly notice that they kind of generally like to to give you a zone where it sounds kind of natural and and plays nicely. And obviously, these are all about like overlapping sounds. These specific presets, but. Uh, I actually really like once you start pushing these samples into the <laughs> extreme zones because you start hearing some of those uh, digital artifacts and I actually really like them in many cases. You can get a lot of really cool kind of time stretched sounding effects there. So. Excuse my playing today. I'm a, I'm a bit sluggish already by now. Uh, not yeah, the time stretching not super apparent here. That actually plays very nicely there. But just something to keep in mind. Remember to push these around these different zones. The 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 green, red, blue here, or the yellow, orange, blue <laughs> on the contact keyboard, because you you really get some fantastic sounds once you uh, wander out of those. Yeah, again, so this is kind of like a collection of different sounds and then you can use the red key zone in the bottom to change pitch. Oh, very nice kind of mid, mid lows there. This I really like. This is hitting a really nice spot. timing very nice again beautifully gritty uh but it's sort of still uh, crystal clear um which is kind of like maybe odd thing to say but oftentimes when you go for those distorted gritty sounds they get really smudgy and then it's difficult to fit them in a mix so you don't quite get your point across musically but you do get that gritty sound but these are super uh well balanced in that way they really know how to pair things in, in appropriate dosages, shall we say.
very cool sound design thing things i love the um, or percussive elements that sort of everything dips out and then they come in it's like an electronic kettle or i don't know some kind of a pot <laughs> very nice did we okay we went through the cue creators kind of mixed mixed bag with this some of the sounds to me a bit sort of underwhelming like they're, they're a bit sort of a bit too veiled and distant the first thing here is like there's a such a wide scope of different sort of sounds loving the gritty uh <laughs> gritty elements uh, that were sort of mixed with a more you know clear pitched element really nice some super impressive low end there i've heard a couple of fantastic uh pads in there as well uh fantastic the effect sounds there that we're in i don't know what to really call them they're kind of like musical accentuating point sound effect things so yeah interested to really let's uh dig deeper in here to understand what this really is so rhythmic ones these are the rhythmic pedals they mentioned so these are in four folders straight stacked so i'm guessing these are stacked <laughs> staggered not quite sure what that means maybe it's like broken down into yeah seems like stacked is like multiple pedals on top of one another because they're in one zone well i mean yeah we can still move the zones here but we got multiple sounds so but staggered okay so yeah that means we got them in a sort of different zones okay cool not sure about that as a way of cataloging these i use these a lot from gravity too and i like first of all that they're in straight and triplets a uh, fantastic foldering approach but i like that they were in low and high that makes it super fast for me to go in and tweak things from the perspective of sometimes i use high ones from in the low register like i just extend the the zone of it to use it like that so maybe here they found that it's not such a helpful thing i don't know but in general i kind of like that uh because if i find something i like here i usually go with sounds individually unless there's a specifically good combo going but um i don't know really hard to say but let's uh let's start playing with these Kind of surprised like these are not as aggressively edged uh, as i expected like these are actually very refined like this one doesn't quite when you play it it's not like hitting you that's the sound of punching by the way it doesn't quite hit you like i expected like more uh, like a physical punch but this is actually really really well put together because you get a, a kind of greedy impression dirty impression and then you have this this uh let me look at my scope yeah you have a really nice like division between different zones you got like up until 100 you basically have that sub low then you have good stuff going up until about 200 and then you start having these different more sort of percussively moving elements but uh yeah this is actually very sort of mature sounding to me quite a few of these out of the gate sound a bit too compressed to my taste overall so i would probably go in here and pull back on the the punishment i don't know if that will help uh and 
you know how far that will get it definitely will give you more leeway but a lot of these i noticed are a tad bit more compressed than what heavy osti has done uh, lately so maybe that's due to uh the the kind of composer's sound vision i know doom is certainly you know quite <laughs> quite uh compressed uh, in many ways but no no every sound has been that way by the way but for example that previous one was like this for example breathes has a nice uh, amount of space to my taste and super impressive how it has that 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 secondary impact that follows is very visceral but again beautifully mixed it doesn't take up any space like unnecessarily I love that top end on that one. Again here, I definitely, I'm hearing that, uh, so if you want to locate things, okay, there's that, and this is, I'm trying to locate kind of the kick element here, but it's not really a kick, is it? it's more like a bass. Yeah. This is why I love this interface, because you can play something and you can very click, uh, quickly hear that. Okay, I like this element, but don't like this one. So you can just choose and uh, pick and go move really fast. So, okay, when I'm pressing any key, it's re-triggering any active key. So I want to um adjust that so where does that come from type retrigger does this fix it okay so yeah the macro sequencer isn't the source it's more like it's playing the actual sample okay here we got this one a really really good sound i'm definitely gonna come back to that and write something with that i need to sort out what's uh which element is actually causing the re-triggering i'd sort of think that it was like a more general setting for sure anyway let's move on the best name ever chugging mac chugster really good sound it's, it's like it's gritty and it's hitting you but it's 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 just sitting in a very nice place in the mix nothing's like overly harsh or coming at you really hard and that's going to be a huge problem in the mix if things are already like too harsh so really nicely that that range uh taken care of there not sure why they limited this range to be what it was and like you saw there when i dragged these zones it happened without a hitch i don't know why it's sometimes it just won't happen at all and <laughs> sometimes it does okay yeah so again here i'm introducing stuff that i wouldn't really want so you just gotta listen to the individual layers and then combine them into zones and areas that you want to use or then just use them individually
liking that sound. I'm not sure why the... Maybe I'm using these pretty differently to what they sort of would think in their head, but this... Why I'd want to... Why I'd want to use it like a re-triggering. But these sound so good. Okay, so there's some kind of a global setting here that's not to my liking. Because I want them to trigger individually, like they do in in Gravity 2 out of the gate in most cases. So this is the sequencer. And... I'm not sure... It looks like it's kind of shuffling through the waveform here. So it's not, not at this level where I want to change things, I don't think. And it's not the macro sequencer I'm looking at. I don't want to do that either. Hmm. I really don't know where to where to adjust that. Because I'd want it to sort of continue, every note continue on its own until it's replay and not reset when I'm playing another uh, note. I'm sorry if I'm, I, well, I'm sure I'm, I'm, I'm ballsing this up. But, okay, we won't spend more time on this because I'll just make this video even worse than usual. <laughs>
I really like about uh, you know changing the starting time of the sample that they really create super cool rhythmic patterns there. There's something different here about the rules of how it's playing those, which I do not quite understand and where it's coming from. Sounds like the start start time is, is different, but then it kind of <laughs> uh, shifts back into the pattern it wants to be in. And again, here you can change with the, the start timing here. a difference there. So I'm, I'm not sure what's happening there. I'm sorry. I don't quite know where I would adjust it. I, I would expect it would be here. But it kind of like, I don't know if it's just... Um, macro sequence or the sound of that that's playing into it. Yeah, again here. How would I... It's hot in here, geez. This hasn't happened in a long while. The weather's been a bit better, but again, let's move on. Again, brilliantly mixed. It's just getting the point across. There's punch, there's grit, but it's like you can hear that. That's not going to be a problem when you're mixing because it's not like taking up all this space and being overly harsh. Cool. That's 100% going to be used. Very nice. That is the limiter. Yeah, for example, there you can hear that it's leaning more into more compressed sound. Beefy, controlled, gritty, but not overblown.
Okay, that's what I mean by altering the starting timing. It just creates really nice uh, kind of polyrhythmic elements there. Um, very cool. There's maybe something about uh, like the initial transient element of the waveform that kind of makes it appear more like it's re-triggering when it's really not. I'm not. I don't know if I'm making any sense here, but yeah. Um, that was that folder straight staggered so I'm guessing these are staggered versions but I'm not sure how much overlap there is whether this is kind of some of these samples must be used in multiple different presets that's at least the case in uh, in a uh, gravity This sounds really cool. This it sounds right down my alley. Very nice. This is super well done. It's like, again, perfectly they've taken out all the stuff that doesn't need to be there and left the, the stuff that exactly gets the point across. Really nicely put together. Low end. It's just fantastic. very interesting the the kind of the scope of this is 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 very uh, very broad So this is kind of the thing that okay so if I want to get rid of like these the, the more percussive things I would just need to mute the elements which is kind of like this sound has good qualities even like even beyond the percussive thing or then I would probably isolate this for its own layer because this say this sound wouldn't have to follow the melody melody line of this one. So I could just separate them and there you'd go. But I'm, I'm kind of left thinking that would there be a way to alter that somehow in the engine, but I can't really think of a good way to do that out of the box. Also, let's uh, extend the blue zone here. Yeah, really nice sounds. These staggered ones seem to be having a lot of good combos.
pretty good. These low. I'm so happy these are in here because I'm actually using a lot of the rhythmic elements from Gravity 2 as as synth bass instruments for for the Breachway soundtrack and these are exactly in the same camp but just like obviously <laughs> we got you know I'll, I'll have more of them uh, uh, at my disposal but these are yeah these are these are very well done Very cool. I also like these kind of like techno-ish sounds, but these are they're very smooth sounding. They're not overly uh, pushed. Loving this. I'm going to do the walk away because I know I'm going to write some <laughs> some uh, music with this. Really good. This is a good example of the kind of pitch time stretching uh, um, effect that comes in. You can hear the, uh, the strain, strain in the sound. You can also hear the low end of like the original sound here when you pitch pitch shift it time stretch it it's kind of like a bit of both uh you can hear the kind of the fundamental note area there and it becomes this kind of beautiful um noise there around the what is this 200 yeah like a 200 250 hertz area becomes like um what's the word in english in fin Finland, we would say kohina, which is kind of like noise, uh, kind of like this, uh, you know, kind of uh, sound. So I really like that. Really, and you know, for this soundtrack, it's all, it's all about like I want the sound of kind of technology to be there, but it's um, some of the factions in the game are sort of manipulating that technology. Should I say? I want there to be a vibe of like human technology interaction and, and tweaking. Um, so I know this is not relevant for this demo at all, but <laughs> I'm very excited about this because this is just, re I love these sounds. So I understand why they restricted the zone to that area because they kind of want to give you the natural sounding best range for that instrument because if you wander off beyond it you will start getting these artifacts but I actually really love the artifacts so again don't be afraid to uh, explore and yeah you might hate that sound so you know don't do it <laughs> Again, super happy about these this low end being of this quality because again beautiful punch imaging point comes across no extra fluff no harshness no building up of frequencies it's all very nicely controlled it will be a pleasure to to mix and also I dig these kind of 
very some of these sounds are kind of very simple kind of techno ish but they're sort of very light and smooth and you can do a lot of really cool stuff with them you know if you do some additional processing like you know granular stuff those will be very very uh interesting for me Well, I'm going to focus on this blue zone. This sounds really good. So again, there's that, like a lot of these sounds in gravity and even in the mosaic lineup, they have these percussive layer elements, which I really love because a lot of the time you're like, when you're writing certain type of sound soundtracks you don't really want to have like a percussive detectable instrument there like you want it to be kind of synthy based but you still want a sense of rhythm and in progression and and these can really do that like oftentimes if you look at the mosaic lineup they can have like typewriter or pencil or something just some random source that they processed into this percussive element really liking that what i would prefer is if we play the we solo the blue zone here which is soloed because we play oh, we're playing only the blue zone anyway but so here uh we have the percussive element plus the melodic one now i would want to separate that kind of uh pitched detectable melodic element from that percussive one but they're sort of baked into one another now they probably they probably uh did it that way sort of recording it in i would suspect anyway but yeah that's kind of like i'm a bit sad about that because i'd want to have that beautiful that's kind of like yeah i would want to separate that percussive element there but i don't think i can when i go here into the menu what's loaded in the blue zone is this sample and as far as i can tell and I can't dig deeper into there. So I would love, because in the mosaic lineup, I think without exception, the percussive elements are always their own layer. So I love that you can either turn them off or on. But what I usually do is just uh, pull back the volume until the balance would be better. Like for here, here I would probably keep in probably that percussive element to a degree just to give a bit of motion there but I would just pull it down far down so that's something to consider really loving this one as well this one is more workable from a percussive point of view because I can just kind of get rid of the low end build up which is mainly the percussive element there again here a good example if I play all of these the same time they obviously play the uh, the recorded sample structure but I can alter the starting point and create entirely different rhythms Not a very good example, but you get the idea. Again, this is the kind of stuff I love. Just really good sound. I 
think my blood sugar is a bit off because my playing begins to suck really hard when when that's the case <laughs> Yeah, 10 out of 10, really loving this. I love these kind of alarm-like synth sounds, really good using those on the soundtrack as well. Loving this, I love this kind of stuff. It's kind of blippy, bloppy, dirty, synthy stuff. And again, here you can just play with the rhythms. Apparently, you can't hear. There's something. I'm not sure if this is the macro sequencer. No, it's not on. So, yeah, I'm wondering where where is that coming from? Please, I'm I'm sure someone will educate me, and please do, because I would love to not sync them up. So there's that sync button, but it doesn't it doesn't do that. What I'm looking for. So I'm, I'm not sure what that's even doing, because it's not doing. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. It sounds like there's a... Something forcing them to sync but I don't want them to sync please okay internet just tell me how it is but at the very least I love this top end I don't know why they restricted it uh, but because that sounds great really cool I'm gonna I'm gonna write stuff with that yeah this is this is really like playing right into my pocket here in terms of like what I what I'm looking for sound wise uh for this soundtrack this is really really nice again here you can hear that the the pitch shifting time stretching stuff working but i want to see because they kind of included and can uh, included that here i just want to see <laughs> what the extreme sounds like Really cool. I love that these low end bass pedals are super solid.
That is stupidly good. Really, really, really good. Okay, we're going into the triplets. There's so much. There's like, when I looked at these folders here, I was kind of like, okay, now I understand the pricing a bit better. Seemed a bit sort of less uh, voluminous as than, than what I expected. But these are, now that I'm playing through all of these, Obviously, you can see that each and every single one of these includes these three slots in which you can include anything from here. And just think about the combinations of things you can put together with these. And it seems like the scope is like surprisingly wide here. So certainly compared to the gravity section of the rhythmic pedals here, I think there actually might be more stuff in here in that department not sure but i'm getting that impression here so yeah it's proving to be pretty uh, pretty expensive Cool. Love all the tiny details, the glitchy, gritty things. Ooh, I love that middle. Really cool. I wonder if that, that initial sound is a layer. Okay. Oh, that's good. So, yeah, I would get rid of that. It's a bit too harsh to my taste. going to be a track 100%. Listen to how smooth and soft that is, but it's perfectly punchy. This roll has that body. Again, you start to hear those time stretching elements, obviously. But yeah, I mean, I, I love that stuff. This, this is really, really, really good. Yeah, that's one of my favorites. Really amazing. I'm going to try and be a bit more brutal here, no pun intended, uh, but try and go faster.
Okay, that's a really cool, cool example of how this sequencer here and the macro sequencer is working. Really, really cool patterns that it's uh, pulling out, out of that one. Let me extend this range just out of curiosity to hear how this opens up. Definitely need to kind of learn the rules there that it's following. Okay, so legato, so this is like a continuing one. You can set that to re-trigger. You can also set this to re-trigger. But even there, it doesn't quite do what I expect it to do. So I definitely need to study these rule sets here. It's kind of strange because it kind of continues definitely on. Obviously, if you have a sufficient break in between, then it kind of does indeed re-trigger. That sounds fantastic. I mean, I would do a walk away here, but yeah, <laughs> that's uh, that's super impressive uh, processing there. Just very musical, technically super clean, cl uh, clear and crisp. I think if I could adjust the sample of that to make it a bit less percussive, I would be a happy camper. Okay, so here, definitely making a bit di big difference. Yeah, so, wait a minute. How can I... So if I'm looking at the waveform here, I'm suspecting now I'm looking at... Yep, each of these as they change. Oh, that makes a lot more sense. They all have an individual possibility for the sequencer. Okay. That makes a lot more sense. Yeah, that makes a lot more sense. Good, Marcus, you, you caught up with something, I'm sure. Most of you catched from the very beginning. This is insane. This triplet folder is kicking ass. And this top band sounded really good to me as well. Insanely good. This these are all in this folder are just yeah 
yeah, I mean, a great example of the power of the the, the macro sequencer here. It's just, uh, yeah, I think sounding better than ever before. Fantastic sound. Again, so punchy. Get those percussive elements. Nothing like this is what I w when Gravity Two hit. I was like, yes, we've arrived in a. It's like a new era of of heavy velocity because they've been fantastic before that. But just like the the mix, the production and quality has always been fantastic. But I f I feel like they unlocked a new level in how they mix sounds, and it must be also connected to the production of it because like you can't really just just mix things to sound better you kind of can but not at this level i don't think so it's just like they they're sitting in a in a perfect place so i i just expect them to kick more ass in in the future but with gravity 2 i was like okay we've clearly tipped because before that i saw like a trend of okay this is getting better and better but they like sound better and always fit better i need to work less in terms of like the mixing work but that tipped that was like a tipping point like that things really changed at that point and i love how these are not just uh you know your one one key press sounds that are like so dense and rich that you can't really do anything else with them and by the way there's nothing wrong with that that's like a specific utility for a specific type of a sound but like you hear these can very quickly be and easily be used in a like a melodic you know um a, a tonal context love that some of these are really wonky really bonkers you know bending that that tonality as well that's i love that i love that i know it's like a simple thing but it's like <laughs> That, that little pitch bend there obviously you're kind of confined to that from a you can't like undo that from a sample point but if if like for me i know what i'm gonna do with that and it's like perfect vibe for this thing that i'm looking to do so very cool um okay going into uh, triplet staggered Very cool to hear more of that ambient side, kind of like a vo you know, mosaic voices type of a vocal thing going. And right here, I'm I'm like I recognize that that low end was a sim similar element. So obviously, like we touched on, many of these are using the same you know samples. There's no endless amount of using them uh, endless amount of them uh, so you're obviously gonna bump into some overlap but i i will say we're in the last folder and that was the first time when i felt like i mean that might have even used the same wait i'm not sure but i that was the first moment i, I got like a very like oh this is a similar thing happening similar vibe 
So that was the first time I was like, like re the repetitiveness was becoming apparent to me. And it was the, like the first one, I'm like, oh, that's quite similar. But I think it's just because these were literally quiet. I mean, yeah, in a similar kind of ballpark, but super impressed by this because it just shows how good the engine is, how good the source sounds is. So the so source sounds are, I, I do apologize. Um, because I know a lot of libraries that have done similar-ish approaches and they begin to sound samey super fast. Obviously, this is done in a kind of a sim, like under a umbrella of sorts of a certain style. But even with that approach, I'm really impressed by how uh, diverse this feels. And also in, in this soundtrack project, I've especially noticed that I mean, for for many projects, you want like a similar sound. I just want a bit of variety. I want, a, you know, different patterns, different takes on, you know, certain, let's say, bass lines. <clears throat> so I want a lot of overlap in style, etc. So that's not like, a, uh, in most cases, even a, a negative thing. I love these type of synths. That's so good. Ah, I, I, that's really cool. This sound is to die for. Now it kind of sounds like one of those typical trance synths, but I like it's it, ha it manages to be quite like soft and pleasant at the same time and also a bit more sort of broken than usual. And here the percussiveness, it hits in a perfect way. It's so soft but impactful. Beautiful. That, those two sounds paired together so well. That's a brilliant one. Let's extend this orange area. Fantastic sound.
how good is that? Like that is just uh, absolutely bonkers. That sounds like a radio electronic harmonium. Th again, how it's like that gritty and puffy and soft, but still it, it, no like filler, no smudge, nothing like that. Really just fantastic stuff. I even love that like broken weird techno thing up there. Yep. Yep. This preset is named Pump and Dump. There are a few things I could say about that. But you know what? I'm, I'm not going to go there. I'm sure whatever they thought about, that's completely different to what I'm thinking about now. Whichever way those goes, you can, you can make your own conclusions about that. There, I love that they kept the low end rumble from there because that that can create super beautiful, uh, yeah, very beautiful atmosphere and sound. I thought it said subdued Potter. So. Yo, subdued Potter. Yep, it's it's uh, it's like the deeper we go, the better it gets. Reminds me of something else, but I can't quite think of what it might be. This is um, these are perfectly balanced, beautiful soundscape. Every like creative processing, make like they sound effortless. And that's when you know, okay, I'm dealing with a great sound. Nothing is trying too hard, you know. And this, this, yeah, let's just move on. That's insanely good. Okay. Pretty crazy. Yeah, again, it's like, they're so well balanced. They know like, because the temptation would be to push this this to be like harder and rougher, but it, it doesn't need to be. Like it, it just sits in a perfect place. All right, going into basses. So I'm guessing these are more playable, so we can probably go faster here. Well, 
let's pull back the limiter a bit here. Really good. I, I honestly thought this would be kind of like more uh, the, the the best side of this would be focusing on the kind of the rhythmic pedals and those kind of manipulations, but that played really, really well and sounded really, really good. I have a very itchy nose. I swear it's not due to too many uh, adult substances. Just to give you an idea, we are in the bass folder, but that doesn't mean jack shit around here. So you can extend the range. Yeah, so yeah, I mean, gets its own sound but just to kind of remind you that you don't have to be at the mercy of these ranges say that percussive transient part sounds really good it's super like smacky these are remarkably well controlled within the engine here because they don't like they don't blow out your your contact straight out of the box But I would expect nothing less from uh, the Doom guy. <laughs> I'm really loving the lo fi wonky vibe on that. Brilliant. I'm surprised that, because uh, with a lot of these in gravity, like you, you can hear that the approach is like the sampling meeting the engine here. So I, I wouldn't from that approach wouldn't expect these to be so playable or I'd expect to hear more of like the sample I wouldn't expect it to be as smooth going from sample to sample but these are really well done
four man four man stuff happening there really cool i think that was the bases going into the leads That, that's really crazy and distorted. sound I wonder how much control I have over the glide for example uh, not sure I would think not much could be wrong but yeah beautiful beautiful sound design there Some of these elements I really like. Oh, that's nice. Oh, that's nice. It's maybe a bit too much. Let's see if we can. Shit. That is one of the best sounds I've ever heard in my entire life. Just, I mean, just having this good of a, like a warm, but broken, a bit like tastefully brittle synth, that warm bottom end. But then if you sustain the, the sample there, it sounds like it's, it's like a cello or, or a bass being like you know the string sort of really gritted out
okay, <laughs> sure. I mean, good example of like the initial preset. You know, you hear elements you like, easy to pick and choose the stuff you want and then off you go. It's a good example of... Yeah, I like those two. And then I would probably... So I'm a bit confused about... Okay, yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Because <laughs> I was like, how do I select these zones without clicking that? Because then it takes me to this page. But it makes sense, Marcus, you click on the number in question. Okay, Marcus. You stupid son of a... <laughs> Yeah, I love this. That this has that kind of uh, um, techno edge to it. Let's put it that way. Yeah, we need to tweak that a lot more to go for what I'm after. But good sounds. That nails that sound for this this specific zone. Has that roundness. like an absolute crazy techno rave track. Yeah, so many of these get a bit harsher on the harsher side to my taste, but it, it's that's very subjective to what you're doing in what genre. Again, interesting elements there. We need to dig deeper. I don't know why I did that, but there you go. All right, going into tonal textures. Fantastic sub for ambient. Really good. Usually for these, I would, you know, like here we see the shared zones. I'm getting, a, by the way, a huge deja vu, vu right now. As I was saying that, and see, I remember seeing this. What? Um, yeah. Ooh, beautiful. It's still tonal, but it's pushing really the dissonant, dissonant side of it.
stunning, beautiful. I again, I did not expect this to behave so smoothly out of the box because with a lot of these approaches, kind of well, I'm frankly not sure how they created this, <laughs> but you know, being like a sample paste, uh, paste, sample based thing, it can it, it, you know easily the transitions can become sort of a bit clunkier and this sounds just so smooth this pairs super nicely with this engine and these these effects that they've gone for it's uh, it's just a beauty to play there Imaging on that noise that's moving back and forth is super impressive. Okay. I mean, these are really surprising me. Again, I love the kind of stuff that pushes the, the like makes it barely tonal, depending on obviously what you do with it. But once you start pushing those chords, I, that's really good stuff. Fantastic. Ooh. Oh yeah, okay, yeah, we're in a tonal now. We'll see about that, and I'll make you tonal. Maybe not. <laughs> That's the limiter clipping.
the atonal stuff usually i don't want to play too much because it doesn't really do it justice i usually simple drones do the best for great sounds I don't tend to like too much top end stuff or like dark ambient style things. Um, cool. That was atonal textures. I did not at all expect that to be there, <laughs> but they sound absolutely fantastic. Uh, so going into the final folder, here's things and transitions. Uh, so let's uh, have a look. Crazy imaging. So kind of spoopy. These have a long sort of overlap time, so it's a bit bit messy. <laughs> and again, here in the red zone, you can change the pitch if you want to change the key you're in. It's so really quite a, kind of annoying to demonstrate because it's just like a bunch of noise, <laughs> for, you know, for you. So it seems like the blues are kind of like sub drops and those reds are transitions. I mean, they sound great. What do you expect? It's like heavy osity. They, this kind of stuff seems pretty easy for them at the easiest. And I'm boiling again. I'm getting like waves of heat. Maybe that's, maybe I'm getting to that age. Cool. Okay. So in here, obviously in the side pane, which hopefully you don't have, we also have this menu thing here. So we could, uh, there we go. So I'll be honest. I do not specifically <laughs> know how this works. Uh, I suspect it's kind of the same thing as as in gravity, etc. Which, again, don't I don't use that too much as a starting point. But okay, so yeah, okay, yeah, okay, I, I get the point. So okay, here is included the approach that in, that is in gravity too as well. So okay, this explains a lot. Basically, you got a bunch of menus here, um, rhythmic pedals and straight and triplet. And then, and these include the rhythmic pedals include like combinations of pedals. And then you can have get, ha, you can get any single pedal, uh, also on its own. So this is what I was looking for earlier when, if you find a good sound and you want to just play that sound and map it 
Yes, here we go. Expand source to keys button is there. So that's what I was looking for, but I didn't find it in the other thingy majingy, the designer. So that's a fantastic feature, Fan you know, absolutely fantastic. We're not going to go into these because we probably played a bunch of these, but just not at, at an individual level. Um, and it, we're running out of time. How long has this taken? Oh my lord, it's been two hours. So, but you get the idea. Um, it just kind of breaks down what we looked at into the very basic components. So you can just precisely pick and choose what you want, which sometimes is the case because you just don't, you know, you don't find exactly what you're looking for. But time to... What did I do? Let's press that one. There we go. We can end with this beautiful site here. So time to wrap this up. Uh, it when it started, I definitely like the deeper we went into this, <laughs> the it, it exponentially uh, got better and better. I don't know what it was about these Q creators here. They didn't like quite break the bank for me. Not maybe the best way to demonstrate the absolute strengths of this library to me. Again, that's a matter of taste and subjectiveness as well. Oftentimes the key creators are just really, really good and they were good here as well, but it was just a lot more sort of sounds there that didn't quite speak to me as much. But when we got into the rhythmic folders, <laughs> these got really good. And for some reason, the triplets were out of this world just insanely uh good sounds uh we'll loop back to that the bass is super playable i hear none of the 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 clunkiness and awkwardness that can sometimes come with some of the uh, you know previous uh libraries like it's it's clear here that they uh th these are they paid a lot more attention to the transitioning be between the notes. So although it is, to my understanding, sample based still, yes, looks like it. It plays a lot more like like a like a just like a synth. <laughs> and obviously this is the case with the mosaic lineup, etc. But these just play really nicely. Um, and commonly, like these individual sounds, don't usually hold a candle to the like the more refined rhythmic pedal elements, but these absolutely do. They sound really great. Uh, looking at the list, it doesn't, there isn't a ton of them, but again, you can go in here and tweak any of these three layers, remove them, use them, change the sound. So these are like very, very flexible. Just with minor tweaks, you can end up with a completely different sound. So uh, these seem like very, um, they offer quite a lot, even though the menu doesn't look huge. Same for the leads. Some of the leads were a bit too blown out to my taste, but that kind of depends again on the, the style that you're going for. And I know that these will be just absolutely perfect for a lot of people who are making uh, music in this sort of style. But for me, some of them were a bit too kind of harsh and aggressive. Some of them were absolutely just beautiful. But, and again, leads play super nicely. Uh, tonal textures, first of all, did not expect these to be here at all. And they sound really, really good. All the ambient stuff, the tonal textures, the atonal, really, really good. Again, with atonal, I don't tend to go to the high end because that I'm more like a dark ambient guy. And to me, just generally, the category doesn't sound interesting to me. So no criticism towards this library, but just kind of how I would use kind of more dark ambient sounds in general. But yeah, the ambient sounds just crush it. And again, I feel like there's a lot of scope here, even though we don't have like a ton of presets here. But again, you can go to the individual sounds, tweak them, etc. You get the point. So even though you look at this and you think, oh, that's not too many presets. There's so much you can tweak in here. Like that was what was really uh, surprising to me with Gravity 2 as well because I was looking at the rhythmic pedals and I thought these sound really good but I wish there were more and then when you work with it you're like oh, I don't actually wish there, there was more it's a good amount uh, now I've obviously gone through them many many times and I'm thinking I would like more of these but um, 
now we have oblivion and i'm no longer thinking that uh st stings and transi transitions we just quickly touched on these but they just sound really good again that's like kind of meat and potatoes stuff for heavy osity so no not uh nothing too surprising there they sound great super impactful they are a bit like aggressive just on our brief very brief playthrough of those so they have that like super aggressiveness for sure uh yeah going to the rhythmic pedals uh, i mean to me this is this was like the the by far the best uh element here uh the triplets were just super super good crazy gr good sounds in here and again on their own they're fantastic but then you hear elements you like so again you can go in here and you can you know pick and choose whatever you want mute things change sounds from the the banks here um and that just like exponentially multiplies the the usability of this so i i was really like going into this i said mm, this doesn't look like a ton of content uh but it <laughs> it is super uh especially in relation to the price tag because i was like okay the price tag is far lower than i expected so there must be some kind of an asterisk here but these are there's a lot of scope uh here so i don't expect you to bump into uh repetition or limitations super super quickly um so yeah i would definitely if you go through the queue creators and you're like eh, you know some of it sounds really good and some of it is like not so evocative uh, i'll just you know keep going because <laughs> it, this this really blew me away um so yeah i mean i touched on the price i would expect this to be more uh it, it's just there's there, there's so much first of all like some of the sounds are 10 out of 10 just perfect diamonds uh and i think there are strong arguments to be made that you can pay a good price for 10 out of 10 sounds even if there aren't that many of them but this one does actually have many of them uh, and obviously this depends on whether you're doing something professionally because if if a sound gives you a project that pays you a living then that's a you know easy trade giving a hundred bucks here or 300 bucks here and getting three grand or 30 grand uh, obviously not the situation for everybody but uh, again i'm trying to look at this from multiple perspectives but um i think pretty much if you like these sounds for anybody i think this pricing is super competitive uh i would have if i didn't know the price and i went into this i would expect this to be at least double at least double of what they're selling this for uh i just like some of these sounds are just they're so so good and you get so many of them obviously you need to like the sound of this uh i like this this is at its best for me when you get that kind of gravity to type of approach like some of these sounds go super hard but for me i don't think that this is where it shines because some of these sounds are like they go hard but they're also super refined very balanced sit perfectly they're not getting too harsh at any turn or too compressed they're just sitting in a perfect place so those are like the best things for me here but everybody makes different kind of music so it's not like you know <laughs> an overall statement that uh you can make but yeah so in short just uh i think this is uh cheaper <laughs> than it could be which is great obviously and um uh, yeah it sounds fantastic there's a lot of scope here like from the ambient sounds to the string stings and transitions and the leads and then you get these kind of like uh techno sounds and then you get these cool like hybrid electronic broken gritty things and then you get these crazy driving basses uh and and like a bleepy bloppy stuff here in between which i also like um but yeah dominantly definitely does have that like hard-hitting electronic distorting cinematic techno-ish sound 
Uh, so, but don't let that, you know, don't let that be the stamp you put onto this, onto this, because this can do a lot more beyond that. I mean, just even the ambient inclusion here is pretty crazy. And yeah, just for like typical uh, cinematic hybrid scoring stuff, this can really bend into multiple positions. I don't know if that's the sentence I was I, I wanted to go for, but uh, very impressed, very impressed. All right, well, if you, if you happen to already have this, I, I guess this video is going to come out the moment it releases, so you probably won't have this. But uh, as soon as you get this, uh, play with it at your studio or at home. Let me know what you think, and as always, let me know what you think of this video. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Finished.